What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast. I am your host, the Best Bot Kids Move, and I got my co-host, ILP Gaming Attic. What is up? What's going on, man? We're going to have a pretty interesting uh, discussion today. We got a lot of stuff to happen today. Absolutely. I'm actually recovering over RSV, I think it is. So, um, but I'm doing it without any medication. So it's just been tea, water, and tea, water, and I think emergency vitamins, maybe. But hopefully, um, feeling better each day. But uh, as far as like gaming, man, um, I've been uh I've been playing mostly on PlayStation. Uh I had I've been playing uh PlayStation 5 Pro came out last week or yeah, last week been playing Horizon Zero Dawn Remaster, Spider-Man uh 2 and uh, what's this another game Ratchet and Clank. Um long story short, there's no actual difference to me in my opinion for the games that I've at least tested. So uh, it doesn't do anything. You want to give your? I mean, let's not do long story short, man. Give your 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 quick opinion, uh, because I don't have a PlayStation Five Pro. You know, give give your honest opinion on the PlayStation Five Pro. Um, yeah, my honest opinion on it is that it's like if you, you know, if you have disposable income, you just want the latest and greatest. Sure, go ahead. If you're going to have a PlayStation console, why not have this one? Um, but truthfully, if you're going from a PlayStation Five. And getting a PS5 Pro, expecting a difference, um, you're going to be very disappointed. It doesn't have that wow factor that the PS4 Pro did when you upgraded from the PS4 to the PS4 Pro. It doesn't have the wow factor from the Xbox One to the Xbox One X. And it doesn't have the wow factor from you know Xbox One X to Series X or uh, One S to Series S or uh, PS4 or PS4 Pro to PS5. I feel like uh, those were glaring. There were things that were immediate you know what i mean like um i didn't have to look at side by sides to see if the xbox series x looked better or i didn't have to look at side by side to see if the xbox one x looked better than xbox one it was just obvious as soon as you booted it up the playstation 5 pro honestly dude like i'm playing it and it's like i don't see what i'm what's going on that the ps5 wasn't doing now maybe this is because i'm not playing at 30 fps in there quality mode and playing everything in this performance pro mode which is supposed to retain some of the of the quality settings uh that usually found in a 30 fps modes in a lot of these games but what i'm seeing is like okay spider-man looks relatively the same uh horizon zero dawn i'm only assuming it has to look the same because i only played it on a ps5 pro but um based off what i've seen on like youtube it doesn't look any different any any different so the biggest difference that everybody's clamoring for is like final fantasy you know i'm not gonna play final fantasy so uh, that's uh, that's uh, that leap i guess i won't experience um but all all the other games that i have um it's not big i played dead island 2 that has a pro patch and it it doesn't the game doesn't run above 60 fps which is not a problem it's fine but it ran a solid 60 fps on all the other consoles and they were targeting you know a higher resolution um so what you're pretty much saying is like from your experience so far mm -hmm. the only real like benefit is like you kind of get the resolution and the uh the the graphics mode and the performance mode in one package and Mm -hmm. like all you're really doing is getting like some more resolutions and pixels on the screen while you have 60 frames. Yeah. And it, it, I don't want to make that sound like a bad thing. It's just that it's the problem is going into the generation. We've already been dealing with 60 FPS. We've already been dealing with 4k or dynamic 4k. So it's not like I'm, I, I don't feel like I'm achieving something that I haven't with the Xbox series X or with the PS five. I don't, I don't feel that. I guess it's not, it's not different enough. And the other thing is, is that, one of the and, and, and a lot of people used to shade Xbox, you know, because when Series X came out and when One X came out, there wasn't a whole lot of games, you know, for it, right? But it enhanced your back catalog, so just games just looked better on a bad boy, like or ran better on a bad boy. On PS Five Pro, if they haven't been Pro Patch, there's no update. You know how we go and we play games that were like FPS boosted or 
uh, or Xbox upgraded the not X, but the console upgraded like the image quality on like some 360 games, but significantly to like we're getting them at 4K and stuff like that. Um, the PlayStation 5 Pro doesn't do that. They have like this little boost mode, but it's like a sharpening filter. It doesn't increase the resolution. It doesn't uh, increase the filtering or anything like that. It's just like a, a like a, a increase to like the sharpening, so it does give off a cleaner look. But it's not like it's turning like 1080p games to 1440p or 4K or anything like that. I, um, and that's why I feel like this is the only reason why I want an Xbox to have a mid-gen upgrade because if they had a mid-gen upgrade, the the effect is immediate. You know, and developers don't have to really do anything because it's all built into their API. With the PS5 Pro, like, sure, you'll get these Pro patches, but the thing is, when you're playing these games with the Pro patch, it's not like it's drastically different from what anybody's playing on the PlayStation 5. So me and you, uh, one day we will probably have to do this, but you could be playing on your PlayStation 5. I could be playing on the PS5 Pro. We'd be playing the same game, and you won't know. If I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know I was playing on a PlayStation 5 Pro. That That's how I feel like it is. Like, when I, I, I still have a, a, a disc-based PlayStation 5 in my living room. When I play games uh, there the same games I'm playing on my PS5 Pro, I, I, it could, I couldn't tell you that, oh, the PS5 Pro looks a, a, a bit different, uh, looks a lot different because it doesn't, at least not in the games that I currently have. Um, so there's that. I think the way I look at like the Pro is if you game on the, the PlayStation 5 ecosystem primarily, it is worth you getting because if you're, uh, especially, you know, there's nothing that's gonna like we're gonna get these games and, and the playstation 5 pro probably gonna last for three to four years you know yeah. maybe three and if you feel like for those three to four years and if you only play on playstation if you feel that's uh you know worth your investment i do think it's it's okay to tell people look you know if uh you want to make sure you play these games at the best fidelity and you only play on PlayStation and no PC, then you know maybe you should invest into th to that platform. But as far as me, like I would have been more interested in getting it, but the the g only game that would have encouraged me to get it already beat. So yeah, so the only game people are clamoring is Final Fantasy. Some people are clamoring. That's um, the only game I would have I would have yeah. entertained. Yeah. So my thing is is like. For, it's hard, like I said, it's, hard, it's a hard recommend if you have a PlayStation 5. If you have a PS4, however, or a PS4 Pro, then it's an easy recommendation if you can afford it. It's it's still easy. $700, though, still asking <laughs> more money. Yeah, but I mean... It's, it's, you, it's, can, you could theoretically get a regular PlayStation 5 and walk out with, like, a game or two. Like, yeah, that's true. Uh, so, and, and not to mention, like, this isn't for everyone. Like, it's for the diehard people, you know, people that listen to this podcast... Me and you, because even if I'm not particularly sold on the PlayStation 5 Pro, I'm not saying I'm never sold on it. You know, they they might show me, you know, Reunion or whatever the next Final Fantasy game is. And if it's not on Xbox or, you know, PC day and day, I'm not waiting around for that sucker. Uh, and if I want to play it at the best possible fidelity, I'm getting that, five, that Pro. Man, yeah, I mean... I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's cool to have, just not a must-have. Um, so let's get into some of the things. Uh, Stalker Two went gold. It was due to come out on next week. Is that a co-op game? Mm, I don't believe so. I don't know. I don't believe so. I'm, I like. I don't have. I'm not super hype on it, but I know people were. Um, you know, sold on it. The previews were pretty good. I think it's probably going to score fit relatively high. Um, I find games like that to be difficult for no reason. Um, but I'll give it a try. You know, things at Game Pass, I'll definitely give it a try. They also released, like, the benchmarks on it. And um, they're supporting DLSS 3. Um, I'm happy to, that they, what they said, they said you could play that. On my card, I have a 4070. Um, I can play it at 4K. But the only way I'm getting above like 60 FPS, uh, which I think the average or the peak is like 70 SP FPS, is with DLSS 3 uh, if I implement DLSS uh, 3. So that means I can probably play at a much higher frame rate 
by not trying to aim for 4K. And that's at like the, well, the yeah, max. I don't settings. think you should ever. I don't think you should ever aim for 4K for, for the most part. Like I always go for, you know, the better experience. Because like I'm all about more gameplay. Because I feel like resolution is more, you know, graphic intensive. Now that could lead to a better gameplay experience. But to me, better frame rate is what I care about. Because in my opinion, that's the better gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, the game just looks gorgeous. I don't know if I where I would play it. I'm probably gonna play it on um, Xbox to begin with to see and see if the performance is uh, op- is if they if they can maintain performance on Xbox. Then you know, I'll definitely uh, continue there. Um, so that's going on. That comes out the twentieth of this month. I think it's gonna review well. Uh, do you got a uh, prediction of where it will will rate? Eighty six, eighty seven. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people seem to really like that game, and I haven't been told one person that experienced that game so far that said it's a bad experience. So I think I think it's going to do well. And um, we've also got the deep dive for Indiana Jones. Uh, did that change? Did that deep dive change anything about the game for you? Yeah, it, it, it's look they're they're winning me over more and more. I don't know if it's because I'm like starting to see the game in a different light, or mm-hmm. it's just like I'm getting closer to the game. Yeah. So I think it could be either one of those. It's like look, like I could still feel the exact same way, but now we're getting closer to the actual game itself. So like new games in general excite me. Uh, I still don't know if I'm gonna like the game overall. Uh, but you know, I'm more of like I like Dishonored games, but this is more of like a grounded Dishonored type of game. Like, there's no magic or anything. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that, but I'm willing to try. It. I'm willing to try just about any game, just to see if I enjoy it and then go from there. Yeah, a first-person adventure game. You know, it's uh, in that case, that's like a a high. Uh, a high budget pretty much pu- puzzler you know those indie games that come out it's from the first person and but they're just like puzzlers uh puzzle games mm-hmm. um obviously there's a little lot more going on there you know it's indiana jones um i like it very I, immersive game yeah very immersive game i i like what they're showing it, it's something that's you know a break from the monotony of type of games we get um i'm definitely looking forward uh to getting my hands on it uh, i think a lot of people the, the, the game's gonna get like you know beat up because it's it's people are going to be judging this game for what it's not you know people want their third person action adventure espionage game they want their uh they want their tomb raider they want their uncharted that's what they want and because it's not that i feel like this game has like a cap like it can't it can't be uh you know the best Indiana Jones game ever regardless of how accurate it is or how realistic it is uh I feel like because it's not the game people want and it's not in a perspective that people want the game is I feel like the game will suffer uh critically not I don't think it's going to be like a 69 metacritic or anything like that but I do think the game will uh you know get unnecessary dings because of it I agree. Uh, as much as I do think it's going to get criticized for stuff that it has nothing to do with, you know, Microsoft should have known, you know, having a, a studio work on an Indiana Jones game that's compared to, you know, uh, that Uncharted and Tomb Raider, you can make the argument they were like rooted from like this kind of origins that people would naturally have expected this to be a third person like those other games. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I hope that they can, you know, get people's attention. But if this game reviews poorly, that's the first thing people are going to go to is like, why did they make this first person? Like there's games that you make first person. And and, I, and throughout the year, Smooth, you know me. I've always said, let's stop pushing third person on everything. But with this particular game, I still to this day don't understand why they went with that choice. It makes me think personally that maybe machine games are incapable of making a third person action game. Because people be, they can hire people that 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 do it a little bit more. All they need is a couple people and key components. 
There's no way, like, all those developers at one point in time, I'm willing to bet you the majority of them's worked on a third person game at yeah. one point in time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, um, I mean, when it's on, it's on PC, so people are going to mod in a third person version of this game. Um, but no, I think, it, but the things that they're doing right, I feel like. Uh, the what you said, the immersion, the gameplay. I feel like immersion's uh, really good. They're going to, you know, because Indiana Jones wasn't walking around like blasting everyone every five minutes. Like, know what I mean? He kind of used his wit. He used his fist. Uh, if there was a gun every now and then, yeah, he'd have to pick one up. His whip, obviously. And I feel like the game's gonna do a good job at doing that. But um, you know, again, being in first person, people want to go run him up, shoot him up. And I think I feel like once if the game doesn't start off like quick. It might turn people off. It might, you know, bore them. It might cause people to drop the game. Um, so to get the the starting of the game is important. It, like it has to start it, it, fast. Here's the thing. There was another game that that we kind of wanted to go towards the third person. What was that game? Perfect it was Dark. Perfect Dark. Yeah, Perfect Dark. I saw Perfect Dark's gameplay. That was like, okay, I could see it. I could see the vision. This game looks. Like you could be first person. It looks like it's natural to be first person. But when I see Indiana Jones and, and I see them going back and forth between third and first, it's like you made half the game in third person. Why did you just not make the full game one way or the other or give you the option to play either way? Yeah. It's like you you clearly see when you're looking at this game, this game, what, it could have easily been a third person. And my thing is like, Xbox has so many first person franchises. Yeah. You did not need another one, especially with Perfect Dark being third first person. But when I look at Perfect Dark and I saw that gameplay, that looked like the okay, that gameplay I could jump behind when it comes to yeah. first person. Yeah. That yeah. looked very you know a, a very you know fruitful. It looked like that's something that I could really jump behind. But when I see Indiana Jones, I'm like, would it be nice if like you did the the stealth things at the side and when they go by like like a like hitman style you just grab him and choke him out with your whip yeah. and it just feels like especially the whip combat imagine if the whip combat was a little bit like shadow more and batman uh you know uh combat a little bit where it's like you know because they they are going more of a, a melee f focus where you can fight people counter like it's just like like to me it's like well i'm not saying that they completely dropped the ball with this. But I do know that the moment if this game doesn't do well, the go-to immediately is going to be, well, they should have made this a third person. Yeah. I think a third person would have been more more attractive, more widely accepted. And being that is stealth, hand-in-hand uh, -hand combat, and puzzles mostly i think it would have been fair bettered as a third person um action adventure game um but the thing is it's like been there done that uncharted i mean unfortunately it needed to be for it to be what everybody wants it needed to be uncharted reskinned in indiana jones and that's it and see but the thing is is like like i said you know uh nathan drake he he's more of a, a shoot 'em up kind of person. You know what I'm saying? Like they could have made this more of like a stealth third person. When you do get into combat, like he he's expert at hand to hand. You use the the whip to like uh, interact where it's not as much like one on one or like one on two, one on three, mm -hmm. where you're constantly using the whip to stop them from from messing with you. Like there's so many options they could have used for this, but yeah. they they didn't do none of it. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the uh, looking forward to it though. Regardless, uh, what do you think this yeah, one's going to land at? I'm, will, I'm willing to try it. Eighty. I always like to give three point variables. Mm -hmm. Eighty three to eighty five, and that that might be. I might be just hoping for the best because mm -hmm. I think this game could easily low eight, low eight to high high sevens. Yeah. Um. I think I got a, a an active wager on this at it being it got to be eighty five or better. I think that's what. Yeah, I think you might as well pay bond now. <laughs> and that, that that bet you just lost. I think you just find out what happened there. <laughs> and um, so uh, one of the the bigger uh, actually, I actually I need to turn on my Xbox. Activision added a game to Game Pass, didn't they? 
Oh, Spyro. Yes, have you downloaded it? No, I've been playing Metaphor. Okay. So finally, Xbox has added Spyro, uh, you know, Activision uh, IP to Game Pass. I think this is the trilogy remaster or something like that. Um, I'm going to download it. I need to. I need to play it. I wanted to. You know, I was interested in Spyro. Never bought it. Was waiting for that bad boy to drop in Game Pass. It's finally there, so I'm definitely going to download that uh, for sure. Uh, it's crazy because there's a lot of things that either drop dropped in Game Pass. Or dropped on Xbox, like uh, Death Stranding, which you've been playing. Yeah. How? They're how? Not, no, they're not Game Pass, but Xbox. Yeah, yeah. It's on PC Game Pass, but it's not the director's cut. I think the PC Game Pass is the regular Death Stranding. The director's cut is a Play Anywhere title available on it's Xbox on Series Epic X. Too. Yeah, and Luna, something like that. I think that's the Amazon streaming service. And they they make him Kojima make him bank He's trying to fund that that Death Stranding too. Yeah, this is a number one seller on Xbox right now, as of today. Are you uh, serious? Yeah, yeah, on the, in the store right now. It's it overtook Call oh, of Duty. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? That, that, that's that's what's up. Hey, man, smooth. People don't buy games. Yeah. Um, I always said that when you take away the Game Pass scenario, <laughs> Xbox gamers will buy it. But why should they buy games when they're in Game Pass? Like, yeah. like don't sit here and like clown on Xbox people for 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 making wise decisions for a subscription service that they have. But Thank when it you. comes to games that's never been in Game Pass, eh, they they tend to do well. You better not be. Yeah, um, I think uh, it. You better you you if you eat, you wait until after the podcast. No, not eat. I need a cough drop. <laughs> my my oh, throat's okay. dry. Um, you no... you, you kind of like backed up. I thought she was about to put like a plate in front. No, 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 no. Um. So, yeah, Death Stranding is doing well on uh, Xbox. Uh, the only issue I'm still dealing with is my game is stuck in Quick Resume. And um, my, my game is stuck in Quick Resume because I'm dealing with that save bug. Like, I progressed. I'm not far in the game, but I progressed far enough that I, I, I don't want to start from the beginning if I, you know, quit out. I think I'm like four hours in. Yeah. Um... I'm still getting my my grasp around it. I'm not sure how the game is supposed to like. I get it. It's, I, I'm at the point where I know what the meta is, the delivery sim and whatnot. But navigating around the the was it DBs BBs that BBs yeah yeah that BTs, I'm not honest. I think BTs. the BBs is the thing the is the baby I the think. BTs yeah and I, and they come from uh, and so my my thing is i guess when you're carrying bodies you, uh, after they after a certain while they get like sort of impacted and they, they bless you and they uh oh, I, I muted my mic did you hear that no i just saw okay. your face um the, the thing is i'm not is, do you ever get combat in the game well uh, i haven't came across combat in the game yet okay so that's where i'm like kind of struggling with I had, I had an incident where, like, I went the wrong way, and I go between, like, this ca this cavern, mm -hmm. and I got to the end, and I had, like, those little things that you stick in the ground and hang down, mm -hmm. and uh, I had to go, I had to, like, like fall, free fall with, uh, like, 30 meter climb down a mountain uh, uh, on a rope. Like, so, like, I could see the, I could see the appeal. I still feel like, you know, Kojima... I don't know what he'd be smoking when he'd be making this game, but I can understand why people feel it. But, you know, I don't, I still don't think it should have been game of the year that year. It wasn't game of the year. It was nominated, but it wasn't game no, of the year. No, that's right. Nominated for game of the year that year. Yeah, yeah that was 2019. It's like, one of the, it's like one of the lowest games with a, a Metacritic score that's ever been nominated. Was it, it was like 83. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that's why I was like, anything's possible. It's like, but yeah, Xbox can't get a single game no matter if it rates. 83 uh, 85 or whether it rates to 92 like hey man they what they got to do is they got to put Kojima in, in like I always thought it would be would be cool with the like they don't want to make any publishers so what they do is they hit up Kojima like look we want to buy your studio but we don't want you running your studio anymore <laughs> we want you to pretty much be the Sarah Bond 
of a Japan publisher that we're building from scratch and we want to give you money to go and find some up and coming developers studios that we f that you feel is going to you know maybe he's not the right person to be in charge of talent finding but you get what i'm saying because i feel like he's gonna find someone that's got some crazy looking games I can't do that. I, I, you can't the, put him in a box he's a movie producer he, he, that's what he wants to do he's a creative he's not gonna... the, the, but see the, 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 let him do that then like i think i i think M microsoft gets hurt because sony is experts at that kind of field and they've been at it for years, so maybe they need someone that, like, you know, starts to learn a little bit more in the production thing. It would probably it probably wouldn't hurt them to know more about how to like market a movie because I feel like PlayStation markets games like they market movies, like the movie industry markets movies, and I think that's one of the reasons you see such unique marketing from them. Yeah, um, PlayStation are kings of marketing, and um, but as far as like. I'm surprised that Xbox had had, had literally had a J Japanese studio on their hands. So I don't really like. I, I don't really like care what what their plans to do or what they need to add. They they had something they could have used that as a driving force. They didn't. They 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 shunned it and eventually sold it. So, um, but Death Stranding available now on Xbox. It only took five years. Now the question is, will Death Stranding two be coming to Xbox? And if so, do you think it's another five years or is it a lot sooner? Six months. Six months from his PlayStation release. Yep. I think. First off, I feel like they might not have even because remember PlayStation, we heard a lot of rumors that, you know, PlayStation wasn't really filling with the the cells and stuff that came from. Um, <clears throat> That came from that game. Yeah. The, the original Death Stranding. So we don't even know what kind of deal they made from it. You yeah. know, they could have got Death Stranding 2 for like, for a deep discount because they were unsure about the next one. True, true. Um, Because now Kojima, he acquired the rights back to the game. So maybe Sony just has like a, a sm uh, marketing deal for maybe a six months to a year. But based on how this dude released um, Death Stranding, he wants to he wants a game everywhere. So yeah, and it's it's interesting that PlayStation and, and look, I don't know if, what the logistics are behind it. I don't know if like you know he was able to do that. I, but my thing is like PlayStation owned the trademark, they own the IP, and to me, I've never heard of a company where after a certain amount of time. I've heard of publishing rights going back to the original owner, but I've never heard of you own the IP until X amount of years and then we and then we give it to you. Like mo m most of the time, there's money exchange between two parties to acquire that IP. Like you, you look at like the Sony thing when it comes to Spider-Man. If Spider-Man doesn't make a certain amount of stuff, the uh, the the publishing rights to Spider-Man go back because they don't own Spider-Man of right. They own the movie rights. They don't own Spider-Man. Yeah, they own yeah. the movie rights. Yeah. And I've never, it, I've never seen, you know, a whole IP go back to the developer just because a certain amount of years go by. I feel like uh, they sold uh, Kojima his rights back. Okay. Is that, yeah, I, I don't know. How, did they reveal any Either details that, about that or no? Well, no, they didn't reveal details, but the, he did confirm that he owns it. And mm -hmm. another, another thing that's interesting too is it's not really devastating for them, but it kind of hurts them a little bit where it's like the perception. It's like right before we're at the end of probably the the uh, Death Stranding 2 IP being mm -hmm. made, and we'll probably start to about to see release dates and, you know, real uh, launching up on uh, on gameplay. Like, it's, it's interesting that right before this stuff starts happening, we're probably eight months away from Death Stranding 2. Mm -hmm. Eight months to a year. And now... When all these, you know, marketing for PlayStation 5 comes out, you're going to see on top of that, that's like the perception that it's a multi plat now because Death Stranding literally went that long without being on Xbox. And now it's on Xbox right before Death Stranding 2 comes out because it's, it's a bad perception in, in terms of like, you know, console exclusivity. And I get it. Like Xbox doesn't necessarily care about console exclusivity anymore. But, but it, I will say this is one of those incidences where it does seem more and more 
plausible that PlayStation might be entertaining. You know, we don't necessarily need to keep stuff off of Xbox entirely. Yeah. You know, let's sell this IP back to him. He could do whatever he wants to. We've already got what we needed from it, so it's not going to hurt us long in the in the long run. Yeah, so it's a it's a weird scenario. Like, um, uh, if I'm curious about the exclusivity window, if there is even still one for Death Stranding two, now I think that he owns IP, exclusivity window. You it think? wouldn't surprise me if it's a straight multi plat, but I do think there is a window. Okay, and what does I would that say either six months to a year, six months to a year? So, what do you think that means for like like OD? Because I, I still don't understand why. Microsoft signing off for these projects and they're not really into exclusives. So like, like the scenario is like, does that was the old Microsoft that signed into those projects? Yeah, but I mean they have been undoing things. You think this is ODs like a, a full blown multi is just still like an Xbox exclusive thing oh, for no, I think time? That would easily come out eventually to PlayStation. Yeah, yeah it's it just that that's just. Like, see, in the perception is even if they intend on that being exclusive, mm -hmm. they've already screwed up the perception. I already uh, everything I see on the Xbox platform mm -hmm. within reason right now, I don't think that they're entertaining, bringing like Xbox, like like Halo and stuff. I know that he said there's no red line. Yeah. But if there was no red line, he would just say Halo and everything's coming. He wouldn't need to say there's no red line. Yeah. You know, say no red line kind of means there's a red line. Because you could literally just say Halo's coming to PlayStation if you intended on that. But the fact that you're kind of like wordsmithing your way out of it makes me feel like not necessarily it would never come out for PlayStation, but they they haven't decided on what they're going to do with that yet. Yeah. We, we, we'll we discuss that more in a, in a bit. We do got another uh, topic, another thing that occurred this week related to Xbox. Xbox was like, you know, kind of keeping us busy. Uh, with whether it be announcements, interviews, uh, deep they dives, did this week. they, they, really did, they did had a good week. week. They had a good week. You know, Call of Duty, broken records and what, uh, breaking records. Uh, it uh, had it, uh, Xbox is uh, the the lead platform as far as like where all the players are coming from. But you know, there was an increase in sales on PlayStation for Call of Duty Black Ops, and um, I can't wait to. I know the UK they put their sales out. They do the little splits and whatnot. But I can't wait for like a Circana. Um, that's going to be more so. I think towards the end of this month, and we'll find out what Call of Duty did and 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 what it did for uh, you know Game Pass and stuff too. Um, but let's talk about South of Midnight Compulsion. You know, sent a few creators out uh, to uh, where they in Canada um, and yeah, Montreal, I think. Uh, yeah, to take a look at. Uh, uh, South of Midnight meet the actors. They came out with this cool 30 minute documentary, uh, pretty much going behind the scenes, talking about the games like, you know, uh, lore, the theme, the characters, the voice actors. It, it, the game looks gorgeous. Uh, it's awesome. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm very excited for this game. I like how authentic it is. Um, but it wasn't met uh, criticism free. Um, we have the DEI and the SBI uh, investor investigators, detectives, these agents who are pretty much you know, their their intent is to pretty much go through every game and find anything that is typically for, uh, from my opinion, they they look for things that are if it has you know black lead characters or or people with colorful hair, or if there's if there's any LGBT thing in it, which, and they they look for these things and they say, okay, this is inclusion, this is DEI, this is sweet baby ink, this is forced, and they go and they break it down, they get a, a swarm of army around, and they start criticizing the game, the producers, the writers, everyone, and they kind of get an army of people to swarm them, and pretty much in their goal is to get a mass boycott of the game, and hopefully, uh hoping that the game flops so they can get some sort of w uh grubs grums whatever his name is um has been he's a has been in the, in the gaming industry he used to work for worldcraft or something he did something some piece of shit blizzard. but huh he blizzard. did blizzard yeah he used to work for blizzard uh, and, and I think he was like actually a big shot when he worked on that game. He was one of the big people. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't keep he track was, of him like yeah, that. Yeah, he was a big shot. Now he's just a big piece of shit. And um, so, so he's been pretty much headlining that. And of course, of course, they, uh, you know, are attacking uh, South of Midnight 
for its and I'm, this is just me being blunt and not you no know, they're they're attacking the game because of his blackness they feel you know sweet baby ink is heavily involved this is dei even though this is a new world a new game inspired by the deep south uh uh um i think forget louisiana some shit like that but it's it's a for lack of better terms it's a black game so typically this DEI bullshit or the sweet big, they, they, the issue stem from them taking, let's say, taking away a character and inserting like a, a person from a different race or a different sex or that. But for some reason, South of Midnight, a game just looks to be developed for what it is. It's a black game. And I, I don't know what makes it forced inclusion. It, it just to, at this point, I guess the game just existing in general, but they're going on about it. Um, I did a video about it. I, I made a tweet about it. Uh, I don't like, I, like the crazy thing is my views for the most part is typically in line with a lot of these people with the whole sweet baby IDIs and stuff like that. I have my fair share. Like I, I get it. You know, I'm not, I don't, I don't like when games are like shoved in video games, but I like what I like about video games. Is I like authentic, uh, authentic. I can't say authenticity or whatever. When when things are done authentically in a, in an authentic way. So I don't see in this game. I don't care if it's a black lead. I don't care if it's a bunch of uh, black people in the game. The thing is, is that the people they they got behind the game, the people that they got, you know, writing and acting and performing, it's the appropriate people for where the game is taking place and what the story is about. So like uh, they can really miss me with that, uh, with their uh, agenda and stuff like that. And it's like, like, I feel like they're, they're going too far. They're like with it. And I feel like I get bothered because I feel like every time they see a black character, uh, or a a black lead in a game, whether it's a woman or, 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 or a man, it, they, the first thing they throw out is sweet baby ink. It's like, dude, can these, can can there be a little bit of brown in the game without this being like some sort of like, I don't understand what are games supposed to be? Is it supposed to be like, they either have a problem with there being people of color in the game or they have a problem with people not being freaking busty and, 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 and tits and ass. That they have a problem with that. So it's like, like this industry is, we well, share this industry with I, a bunch I, of like virgins, dude. That's what I think. Like I've racist seen virgins. A lot of- when it comes to like the you know the sex appeal, mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of people complain not necessarily about characters not having that, but like desexualizing characters like that have been highly sexualized and like part of their you know I wouldn't say charm, but like part of their personality they've had like Mortal Kombat. You saw that a good amount. Uh, another good example is uh, I saw a lot of people complaining about like Dragon Age. Like uh, one of the characters is like always been you know a very sexual character and like they kind of dumbed her down where like you know she got a lot more clothing on hey look does that mean necessarily that you shouldn't do that no do i think you like for instance like when it comes to sex and games like i have romance people in dragon age uh velgard Mm -hmm. it's literally the worst romance i've ever seen i'm not saying that i need like a nude scene or anything in a game but you build up for these like for the uh for this like romance thing and it just feels like you know they they didn't really care about it like they they cared more about the beginning of it than like the actual Mm -hmm. you know romance itself and it's just like that's my biggest thing it's don't affect a game writing because you don't feel that it's not necessary because stella blade she was designed by a woman a lot of these people these highly sexualized characters they're designed by women they're drawn by women like Mm -hmm. so it's just like if that's the character you have in your mind then that's fine but to me if you if you take a character and you you know really dumb her down and and like a lot of her characteristics that she's had throughout the years because it's it's interesting that you go through here and then like you get to a game like velgard and then 
you know, they're they're removing a lot of like dialogue that lets you like complain on certain things. And I went back to like the composure thing. I do think there's a lot of racists that are hiding in the crowds. They're trying to to join a movement, but I don't think it's all of them. Uh, you know, I do think that these same individuals didn't really complain when you know the chick from the outer worlds. You know, she was a gay, and I think she was even black, wasn't she? Ooh, Parvati. Uh, Parvati. No, she's, she was, gay. Like, she's gay, but she's she's not black. She's she's southern redhead from yeah. She had a southern accent. Oh why? Well, but anyway, it's gay character in general. Like, it's, mm-hmm. I think people, the the people that generally want what's right for the thing, those are the ones that is in the middle, and I feel like. Both sides are like the extreme left or right. It's like the extreme left feel like there's no middle ground. You have to be the extreme right. And the extreme right feels like there's no middle ground. You have to be the extreme left. Like there's a lot of people in the middle that's just like, yo, like this doesn't feel like Dragon Age. There's a lot of issues that's going on. I enjoyed it. I beat Dragon Age. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And as far as like the compulsion stuff, you know, I understand. Here's my perspective. There, to my knowledge, people from Sweet Baby was caught red-handed, like, being racist and, like, kind of kind of fueling that on Twitter. I think I seen that one girl was doing, like, a uh, some kind of uh, conference thing, and she was, like, telling people, you need to bully your marketing team and scare them into using us. And you got, you know, them people making, like, really, like, harsh uh I think I saw what's her name. Uh, no, that's that's the community manager. But I'm talking about Sweet Baby, Baby Inc. right now. And the thing to me, it's like, even though I'm not the kind of person that's going to look at like a, a game like South of Midnight and be like, oh, you're you're messing with Sweet Baby Inc. I'm just not messing with mm-hmm. you at all. I understand where people is like, are we truly about no racism or is it just one way? Because to me, I don't want to socialize with racism at all. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're Mexican. If I get a racist vibe from you, I'm not really feeling that. You know, it, it, and to me, have you seen what that compulsion chick has said on Twitter? Nah. Oh, dude, it, it's crazy. I, I don't know. Do you want me to read some of it? Like, Go ahead and read some of that. Like, <laughs> so keep in mind, she did say this stuff to Colin Moriarty. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but to me, it, it shouldn't matter. Uh, do you want me to share my screen? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. This is what she said to Colin Moriarty. And it's like I said, like, I don't believe in any way, shape, or form. Like, conversations like this need to be, like, double down. Like, yeah, you know, crackers be gone. And this isn't like the only thing she's saying. She's like, you know, we don't acknowledge Carl Moriarty. Crackers be gone. And then, and then Colin put this kind of stuff in here too. Like she, she's been doing some extra stuff for a while where it, it's just like, there's no reason to act like this. This is not acceptable behavior. No one should be acting like this. I was wondering why I had so many mayo in my mentions and apparently he found my tweet. Do you think that's an acceptable way for a person in the industry to be acting? What is, uh, what is her role? Her, She's the community manager for Compulsion uh, Games. She was just hired like freaking like well, last year when they announced the game. No, she, she, she was acting this way working for Logitech. Oh, so what's the big deal? I so mean, you, you think this is acceptable? You no, think, my thing you is think she. This is how someone in the industry should act. No, I mean, this is so she. So my thing is, what's this have to do with South of Midnight? It's it's not about what has to do with South of Midnight. It's to me what I see looking at this is people so, saying I'm not rewarding bad behavior. Now, even yeah. though, like I said, I'm not agreeing with it. I enjoy what I see at South of Midnight. Mm. I feel like this game is going to captivate a lot of people and it's going to do a lot of good things. And I don't believe in punishing a whole team of people for the actions of one or two. But I'm just me. And I only can tell you from the perspective of like a white dude. When Mm. it's like we're, you know, a lot of people are trying. You know, I get it. Racism is horrible. 
a lot of people get a lot, you know, especially, you know, there's a lot of people that suffer from racism, but the way I've seen it on Twitter is it's like, do we only cover the racism when it's towards non-white people? Because to me, you shouldn't be like just like what you said. What's the big deal? She was saying some off the wall shit. Why is she still have a job? <laughs> well, she got a new job. <laughs> so. No, but, but see, even there's no way Microsoft has not seen these. When she got a job at there and she announced that she was from compulsion, I guarantee you these were shared to people. I guarantee you these were flooded on Twitter. She is she has a protected Twitter account right now. You mm-hmm. can't see her tweets unless she follows you. Why? You're a community manager and you have a protected Twitter. Does that seem very is this seem a little contradicting? I mean, it depends. Is it no. Does that seem contradicting that you have she has to follow you, a community manager, someone that you're supposed to be able to rely on for information. She has to follow you to see it. I don't know, man. Um I don't I don't I, I so I guess w- your point of view is like I get what you're trying to say like um like you don't tolerate uh uh, racism, racism in any other direction. So obviously, when At people all, are being uh, racist towards uh, or uh, uh, towards white people, which she, well, it's, uh, it's, it, no, I, I don't, I don't tolerate hate. Hate at all. It doesn't matter where so, it's going. It doesn't matter so, who it's shining on. And if homegirl can get on Twitter and, and and spread all this hate, to me, if no one's able to like. First off, she still got a job at Compulsion, which is insane to me. I don't, I don't mind. I, I don't blame people. That's like I'm not supporting it. I'm not. When did people, it's like? When did people bring this to light? Like when did we, we? My thing is when did this come to become a thing? This, this came. This was in 2021. So this was this blew up in 2021, or is it blew up now? Yeah. No, this blew up in 2021. Oh, okay. To, to put it to you, this like so this, this blew up before tweet. even. All right, so this was before even like uh, compulsion stuff. This is this is before even that. So this is her being somebody that works for Logitech at that time. I, I I don't know if she was like an official member of Logitech, but she was a partner of Logitech. She was pushing she was a, Logitech. Wasn't products, she a streamer so. then? I don't know. Uh, but my point is, it doesn't matter what she did. What these tweets is? That's all the proof you need. You don't need to go any further than that. Okay. So like she's saying boohoo cracker. I don't care. Like, like it, 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 one plus one equals two. Like this chick is a racist. And she shouldn't have a platform to spew her racism on. She shouldn't be hating on groups because of the color of their skin. Smooth. She shouldn't have a job uh, in the industry. Uh, okay. Which is a community manager trying to sell a game to a cr- to a community. I agree with what you're saying. I have no buts or anything like that. My thing is though, my thing is I, I forget how we land on her from uh, the backlash that South of Midnight is getting. I thought something happened and, and this became like a well, new. It, it, obviously, there's 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 racists that that are using this to hide in the crowds. Like I said, they 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 trying to like they trying to stab people in the foots and stuff. Um, you shouldn't listen to them. But when I see criticism on this, like. I get you, but why should I support a game where they have employed someone like her Mm -hmm. that clearly hate me? Why should I support her by buying the game that she's working on? And to me, okay, I I get it. I'm not going to fight you over it. I'm still going to play it because I don't believe in punishing the whole team for the actions of her and a couple of people from Sweet Baby Inc. But I understand the mindset to that. It's like, if they can't get her, because clearly they, her job has been shown to people. I don't care what people say. People from Xbox, people from Compulsion have seen those tweets. There is zero reason how the moment she announced her job, I guarantee you those resurfaced. I guarantee you those were, were shared at Xbox. She still has a job. So it's like if Xbox is willing to yeah. hire people like that, why should people support Anything they do when it comes to that particular I, I get you, but a community man, I, I, this is gonna sound horrible, but community a community manager for a game ain't shit, and the the, the role is usually short standing. 
Like once this game launches, the, the, her role goes away. Okay, but okay, but would that ex- what? I don't. She's still part of the team. She's still employed nah, by Compulsion. She's, she's a still, part of the. She's a part of like maybe the PR team or the uh, the Twitter oh, so team. She's part. She's she's spraying racist sl- stuff on Twitter, and she's part of the what team? Smooth. Uh, she's probably. I would say that's the closest thing is to is maybe public relations. But my thing is, she has no involvement of the game, the game creation, or the games like like launch. So my thing is is that this incident that you're bringing out, which is valid. Is isolated. It's four years old, and it's just so now she just happens to be connected well, it's, to it's a game years, like, that's getting like some unfair treatment over a racial issue. And, and I feel you on that. And I look obviously like uh, Crumbs. Well, I don't Crumbs. agree with him. Yeah. Whatever his fucking name is, I don't. Agree with that dude. Most of the time, he'd be tweeting like very light, innocent shit that don't really hurt no one, doesn't really affect anything. And I'm like, dude, whatever, get your money, I guess. When I really was not feeling him is when he did the Maddie thing because that was intentional. He was trying to ruin people, and I don't like that shit. Yeah. Uh, I don't like this dude at all. I think he shouldn't have a platform on Twitter because he spreads misinformation. Uh, and I don't think he should be able to even tweet this kind of stuff. But at the same time, he did bring it to light. And then, you know, like, I get it. There's a good chance that, like, you know, she was replaced. Maybe the other character is white. Here's my thing. Even if the other character is white, so what? Because to me... I don't even believe that, bro. I, I don't... But, I don't, but, 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 but my it, point is it doesn't matter. So what? To me, it makes more sense her in this setting than it would a white person any damn way. So what? Like, may, maybe when... Because here's the thing, like, when it comes to Sweet Baby Ink, I know a lot of people have an issue with them, and I do too. I, I don't like the way they've moved themselves. Yeah. Maybe they will on this one. I think this game, written from this perspective, is going to sell it better, and it's going to be a better game. And to me, when I see this, it doesn't feel forced. This isn't a DIE movement. This is just a character that they're building around black individuals. It's not a DIE thing. My issue is the community manager. My issue is employing people that straight up being uh, racist, spewing hate. That's my issue. The game itself, that's why, you know, when it comes to Dragon Age uh, Velgard. Dragon Age Velgard is clearly pushing an agenda. But the game is still good, so they're able to get away with it to a degree. Mm -hmm. This game, I don't know if it's good. I ain't played it. But what I've seen, I enjoyed it. What I've seen, it looks good. So I'm not going to not play it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time... Even though that I have that perspective and I'm not going to punish the studio, I'm still going to call, you know, an apple an apple. She shouldn't be employed if she's spreading hateful speech like that. She should have been gone a long time ago. She shouldn't be able to get a job knowing that she spoiled hateful speech like that. Not fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, Hey, maybe they didn't see it. I Who's mean, I, I don't, <laughs> even if they didn't see it when she got hired. I find it hard to believe that people didn't see her, see the compulsion magic. You know how the, the, this is. The moment you go into the streets, I guarantee you, if I get a big job, they're going, they're going to have, they're going to have videos of me threatening to kill Chris Righteous. <laughs> get everywhere. It's going to be everywhere. You want to hire this dude? I know that happened. We both know that happened. Yeah, yeah. You're going to hire this, especially racist people. Oh, they love when they can get someone down. Yeah. That's the first thing they share. And even if they're in the wrong. And they have some malice bullshit intentions because they try to get her fired because she's black. She still said those things that she shouldn't have the job anyway. Yeah, this. Uh, yeah, and, and I, think, I think it's a little personal to me, too, because I knew the ex community manager for compulsion games. And guess what? She didn't say hateful speech and she lost her job. So question, though, what prompted I guess it doesn't really matter, but I'm curious of what prompted her to say those things to Colin. Um, the way I looked at it, it she he was saying something and she responded to it, and then Colin tried to uh, get her on uh, Sacred Symbol to like. I remember this happening too. Like it, it, I remember these tweets. Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen again. Might as well just read the whole damn thing at this point. All right. 
All right, so whatever her name is, uh, I, I thought her name used to be Pika something. I guess she's changed it. I like to accordingly invite you to Sacred Symbols Plus. You can tell me why I'm bad, what my crimes are. My audience would love to know. I'll donate a thousand, uh, 1K to a charity of your choice uh, and make the show free for all live. No edits, 90 minutes. Let me know. Uh, clearly, she didn't do that. You know, we read this once. I think she just proactively tweeted this. I, I don't I don't know all the context behind why she said the stuff that she said about Colin that led to all of this, but it does feel like it was this initial tweet because that's what Colin showed first. This we don't acknowledge Colin Moriarty. He's one of the don't trend on me's. Uh, and it's like I said, she put on here, cracker, be gone. Like, look, I'm not the kind of person to get like offended by, you know, calling me a cracker. I've been cra called a cracker like my whole life. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, but like, it's just... It's still like this tweet. I ain't never heard no one call white dude Mayo. I ain't never heard of that. That's new. But once again, this should not be a behavior of someone in the industry. You know, it, I truly, there are people in this world that truly want a better world with, with, with as least racism as possible. Would you not agree? Uh, I agree. <laughs> To you, me, it starts with count, <laughs> accountability on both sides. How many times have I came up here and called so... Uh, and, I got attacked for the Assassin's Creed Shadow shit, remember? I could show you DMs of people threatening my life because I said you guys are some racist bitches that just don't want a black dude in Japan. I got called all kinds of shit for that conversation. But once again, in order to take on this issue, there's got to be accountability on both sides. I concur. Okay. Okay. No, that, that... And, and I'm not telling you you don't. Here's the thing. I can say what I'm blue to the face. It's personal for you. You dealt with it your whole life. So it's easy for me to sit there and say that. But I'm telling you from my perspective of the people I know that are white that generally don't fuck with racism... It's hard to like completely be like, yo, when you when when people just let chicks like this run wild saying crazy shit. Yeah, I mean, I do I get it, you know, some of those tweets were foul. I you said you never heard one time in my life said her have you said someone referred to someone as mayo? I got all this mayo in my comment section. Like it's just like because when you look at that, it's just like, at that point, you've lost the majority of the people that's going to yeah, actually help I, I, you get something I, I've wrong. never heard uh, white people be referred to as mayonnaise. I don't know. <laughs> at, at least she's unique. I'll give her that. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I, I will say this. Uh, I believe that incident... Um, was isolated maybe the dude struck a nerve i'm not defending her i don't know her i know she was the community manager well, she, until you just brought made, it to my attention she's she, she <laughs> made tweets saying that she hates gamers like she's not a good person to represent any video game i understand no um well compulsion if you're hiring you know but uh smooth you would be a way better now obviously you know You'd have the same issue if you got a job in this industry. Absolutely. <laughs> People got some crazy fucking videos of you. <laughs> but once again, it's like I don't I don't believe that you've said anything nearly as that bad. Now you said some very questionable stuff that probably upset some people, but she feels proud of it. Like she feels like she's straight up cold still, calm as fuck. Saying some crazy shit like yeah. that, don't give a fuck. I, Most of the shit you say is from emotion. Let's I, be honest. Yeah, I, I can. I think again when during this time when she was going back and forth with Colin, I don't think she represented any sort of company. I think she was just a regular content creator. But and like when I you said, are a like, regular content creator, I mean, you kind of. We, it, it, it's it, like you it is what it is uh so and i think you know i mean and, and it's not unpopular for content creators to transition into like community managers or brand ambassadors or uh see, pr for companies i mean we've had okay, opportunities so, to do quick. that okay mm -hmm. i get you smooth you saying we don't if this might be just an old thing man we, we don't know what she doing let, let, let's check what she doing these days I couldn't tell you her her tweets are protected. You can't see shit she be tweeting. Uh, How is someone 
that's a community manager that's supposed to get their point across. Right here, community manager, compulsion game. She didn't even put the at with the compulsion games, but that's besides the fact. So it's just like, how is someone that's a community manager going to be a community manager when your posts are protected? Maybe it's that way because she knows she has <laughs> she had that situation with Colin and she had to do that to protect her job. Hey, you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not again. She's an influencer. I was I was right. She was she's she's an influencer. A community. I'm telling you right now, community manager ain't shit. It's they're not shit. To, they don't get paid shit. They don't. They don't got the craziest perks. It's just that the. Th that's it like any of us can be a community manager like you know what i mean if we clean ourselves up and apply for it but most community managers come from content yeah, creation people, or people, influencer people see me so explosive my ass ain't never getting no damn community manager job yeah all right so the final topic of the night Phil Spencer had an interview this morning with Bloomberg. I wonder how many people in the comment section call me racist now. Uh, no, nah, you know, they, they know it. Attic is not a racist to any degree. Um, <laughs> that may just, I'm just telling you from the perspective that it's like, come on, man. Like, like, it's just you You can get your point across. You don't like calling. You know how many people like, don't like calling? They don't have to say, don't have to say some crazy stuff like a mm -hmm. can of spray that says, go, go, be gone crackers like it's just like hey, come on man like we shouldn't be rewarding hate for any way reason like whatsoever i don't yeah. care if it's prejudice i don't care if it's anything hate should be rewarded with fucking nothing no you got a point man i'm not i'm not against it i'm not against it um you are right about that so um phil spencer had an interview um with bloomberg uh who did the interview was it jason trier Mm, I don't think so. Uh, it might have been. I feel like he tweeted like someone else did the interview yeah. and he was just there. Yeah, so... I couldn't tell you, though. Phil Spencer talked about the famous handheld that they're going to be doing. He talked about uh, acquisitions. He talked about cloud gaming. And he talked about games going to PlayStation and Nintendo. Which one you want to tackle first? Um... Whatever you want to, man. I'm cool with whatever we got. So the handheld, the Xbox handheld, it's obviously, he said it's a few years out. What does that mean? It's 2024. So he said a few years that out. That means whoever's saying that, how, that handheld was going to get announced, <laughs> they kind of tripping. That shit ain't coming out anytime soon. I don't know what to make of it. Um, Obviously, I'll be hyped if it, if it comes out. But I'm happy to hear that they're actually working on something. You know, we definitely want Xbox to remain in the hardware business, whether they're doing a, a handheld, still want them to do traditional consoles. Um, it's just that every, their moves have has been sort of shaky, so you don't know what they're going to do. And it's hard to trust them. But uh, he pretty much com all, confirmed, all but confirmed that a handheld is coming soon. Talked about how... They want to do it the right way. They got to study the market. Um, he also commented on, you know, expensive consoles. I think this was like a dig at the PS5 Pro where he said $1,000 consoles is not going to grow the business. So um, I guess if they're doing another console, they're not targeting it. It costs $1,000, but I do still think that it's going to be six to seven hundred dollars i do think it's going to be something like that. that's why like when people are like oh you know we're about to pay you know a bunch of money it's like dude we're gonna pay a bunch of money regardless like dude, these companies ain't gonna take no loss on anything do i think it's gonna get to like a thousand plus probably not they know better they they know better for that but don't get it twisted that you know i don't think they'll go 700 because i think i think it's pretty clear you know thanks to the playstation people man you guys didn't buy it you know, I think they know that, that 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 ain't it. That price point ain't it. I think, um, like, I mean, I, I, I don't know if it'll be $700. I do think their next console, they won't sell at a loss. So I do think they'll sell for profit, which means it's probably going to be higher than $500. Um, Even without these tariffs go. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Um, Phil Spencer also talked about did he comment on Black Myth Wukong? No, J uh, Jazz posted something like 
cryptic about that. I don't know if he was meaning that, you know, he's mm-hmm. being cryptic or is Phil Spencer being cryptic. I don't mm-hmm. know. Phil Spencer also talked about, um, like their their mobile store got delayed. Uh, I know they've been trying to launch that now that you know Google and I believe Apple, but I know for sure Google's. Uh, they have to allow third party stores to be able to be on their platform. So they're working on that. Um, they talked about the um, damn. What the hell did he? Uh, Cloud Gate, being able to, I don't know why this it seems like an impossible feat, but just because they're still working on getting us to be able to stream the games that we own, right? The non Game Pass games, um, they're still working towards that. Um, but they've had some made some progress because you could buy games on like stream. Um, I know it's that is, I think it's in beta, and uh, the really the biggest thing is. This one, I, I think I'm so numb to this that I virtually had no reaction. Where Phil Spencer says, and you mentioned it early, that there's no red line of games uh, uh, coming, going to like other platforms, that their games have been successful uh, going to other platforms. So pretty much everything is on the table. I had no real emotion or reaction to this. Now, no, if this is like. I don't care anymore. Yeah, I don't think I don't I don't think I care anymore. We might have to sunset Planet Xbox, but but um no, nah, I yeah, I don't think I care anymore. And I think I, uh, people were bothered. I watched a video from Colt Eastwood, man. This like and this is not me taking jabs at Colt, but <laughs> you gotta check check out the video. His uh yeah, I, there's there's some frustration there. Um there's obviously frustration. People are upset because you know, we feel like Xbox had an opportunity to do something with all these acquisitions, with all these IPs. Uh, they had an opposite. They had an opportunity to to attempt to put Xbox on a map like the way we want them on the map. But I think, I think I don't I don't know because you never know uh, with these companies. I think Xbox will be and are very successful. I think uh, with them becoming this mega publisher. And all these bar- all these access points, whether it be via Xbox console, whether it be via cloud, whether it be via Game Pass, uh, or being available on other platforms, they're in a position to have their cake and eat it too. Meaning, maximize on Game Pass subscribers, maximize on sales, and they can take advantage of the zeitgeist. It's the only way that the way their games are going to be able to go viral. They have to be everywhere. Now, as an Xbox fan, as a xbox core fan it it, it, i hate that they're going in this direction uh but the the thing that you can only hope for like i said i mean console gaming i love console gaming pc gaming if you're gaming on pc you're not i mean the world is yours the um the thing that uh i forget what i was gonna say but the thing is is that they're going to be successful. They're going to have those viral moments because they can't have those viral moments without these other platforms. So what's best for Xbox is not what's best for us, but I'm over. I'm to the point where I'm over it. I'm like, I like if when Starfield launches on PlayStation, it's not going to be a thing to me. Indiana Jones, it's not a thing to me because by the time Indiana Jones come to PlayStation, I would have already beaten it and played it and exhausted it on Xbox or PC. One of the two. Um, so it's just, it, it just comes out to where you want to play your games at. Now, the the thing, the best thing that could happen, what should happen, is that everyone follows suit. Place the best thing that can happen is PlayStation does the same thing. They won't, but that would be the one thing that would literally make this seem like not a problem. Um, but you know, right now PlayStation is doing weird stuff, like Death Stranding's coming to xbox horizon lego horizon on switch even though that shit scored a, a like a freaking 69 or 70 a, like i don't know what happened there but they're doing games for the switch they're doing uh and they're you know giving games back to publishers so they can port it on xbox 
And Xbox is just going to be that. Xbox is essentially being the thought of like, just like, hey, no, we're going to be the active publishers. Then we're not going to publish your game. We're not going to publish a game. We're going to publish the game directly on your platform. We're not going to go to another third party or anything like that. But um, it's a it's a situation that, you know, a lot of people are bothered by or annoyed by. And this thing seemed to be spearheaded by Activision Blizzard. Uh, that the acquisition seems to do more harm than good from a fandom perspective. But um, I, hopefully there's it, it, it's whatever they do is successful because I do prefer to have Xbox consoles and prefer they stick around. I love the e- Xbox ecosystem. And so that's where the concern comes in for me personally. But um, as far as the games, it's like I, I'm kind of over it. I'm going to play them where I'm going to play them. That's either I'm going to be on Xbox or PC. You? Uh huh. <laughs> I can't hear you. You keep breaking up. Oh, you can't hear me? I um no, I just went on a long rant about. Well, it's not a rant. In, in long story short. I'm no longer affected or no longer care. Oh, no, I heard all that. About, it's just like the last like couple seconds I didn't hear you. I was like, what about you? <laughs> That's all. It, uh, it comes down to it. It's like, look, it's happening. Doesn't matter what we feel. Uh, I still think it's a mistake. But, you know, they, I think, I think Microsoft and Xbox are, are either it's going to work out really well for them or they fucked around and found out. <laughs> so, you know, because I, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it was a good move. I don't. I, I think no, I don't think it's good at making all. a mistake. Yeah. I think that you know they, they're trying to. It's like what happened in, in the Xbox One era. Like, you saw this landscape and you saw the direction that the industry is going, and you feel like you can beat everyone to it, but you jumped the gun and you derailed your whole damn platform. I feel like they're doing it again. They're saying, "Oh, you know, uh, we, you know, Apple, <laughs> Apple, they, they're about to lose this thing. You know, we can put our stuff on there, but then they don't look at like clear examples of Resident Evil being on phone and sold like shit. So it's like, so you mean to tell me that you think people are gonna play these games on a phone on a streaming platform?" Now it's the one thing to play like on a, on a laptop, and you know you 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 play on like a browser or something or a TV. I could even see that working to a degree, but it's just like first off, the internet in the Amer- in America is so below with everyone else, so you're gonna have to deal with that. I, I think they they really think they can reach all of these people, and I think they're gonna isolate and kill their hardware and reach no one. Yeah, that's the, that's the scary part. Yeah, because they. They're not massively successful with their customer stuff. Xbox has been the longest running, you know, consumer. Yeah, that's the crazy product. part. Yeah. Like they be doing so much stupid shit, and then you be sit there. No, trust me, bro. That's what they say. Like, trust me, bro. Like, what have you done to make me trust you? Yeah. Yeah. So that there's a concern. So like, you know, pretty much people got to do is like do what you will with that information. You know what I mean? If you want to stake with the Xbox ecosystem or like or it's Game Pass, like you're a driver of games or or, or do you go to, you know, PlayStation and just absorb your 100 percent gaming uh, that way? Um, I think I do think eventually they're going to get to themselves in a situation where um, it makes perfect sense for them to just go ahead and abandon the hardware because they're not making much money off the hardware at all anymore. Yeah, that's the scary just thing. Just go straight third party. And people sitting there telling me, well, why would they do that? You know, that they make so much money off the hardware. Do they? Because right now they have a decent amount of hardware out there. Not a lot compared to previous gens and compared to their competition. But what happens next gen? If they sell a million or two in the whole damn year, <laughs> what happens... Well, you think they? You you mean to tell me the company that just abandoned Mixer? <laughs> you think the company that just abandoned Windows Gaming? <laughs> you, you mean to tell me that these people are gonna keep? You know that one of the most these people have literally laid off thousands of people just to meet a quarterly <laughs> expectation, and you gonna tell me with a straight face, a straight face that they won't do that to the hardware? Because people are oh, it's just a hardware. No, there's people that 
develop on the hardware there's engineers that are, are constantly reorganizing the hardware there's xbox live shit once they get rid of that they can get rid of xbox live to a degree too no more skype ma uh, maintenance because that's what a lot of the uh, xbox live goes through is skype it's like dude there's so much money that's going into this damn hardware this hardware right here there's a lot of money going into this and if they feel like they're not making that money anymore you're going to tell me they're going to keep doing this I think I, there I, is. I don't, a, even, I don't even know if they're having a next gen. We ain't talked about it. We ain't heard about it. Sarah Ball said at the beginning of the year that we were going to see something. I know people I said maybe that's the Xbox. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't. But here's the thing: they, she said that, not me. I, I think yeah, is that. She, I think that's the digital and the the, the two terabyte. I think that's what that is. The context to the, the discussion. Nah, she, she said, just said hardware. She didn't say next gen hardware. Uh, but but you know, she said you guys are concerned that we are not committed to hardware. How does yes. it make sense that the way to to relieve our commitment to hardware is to show us the same damn hardware? No, to me, she meant next gen, and I think. Look, is it possibly? Probably. We're probably gonna have a next gen. But the way they moving would not surprise me. If they're like, you know what? How much money is it going to cost us to maintain a next gen hardware for eight years, seven to eight years? And they see this. How much should we spend in R and R? This. Oh, R and R, but on R money, it's 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 a significantly less than we go spend if we maintain that hardware for another generation. Yeah, mm -hmm. cut that shit now. Yeah, the only thing about that by them prematurely cutting, getting out of the console business, I think is they are leaving money on the table because what about all the money they make on just other games just being sold on their platform? But that, that's under the impression that they sell enough consoles next gen to continue making that money. True. Bring up a good point. But um, yeah, that's a good point. And um, that's the, scary, the, the whole scary thing about this, about Xbox's business strategy. Going multi-platform, getting out of the console business. I'm not saying that they will, but that's always a concern. It's, it's a real concern. Either, but the way they'd be talking, like it wouldn't surprise me. It True. wouldn't because they, they, you know, if if we know anything from being on the Xbox platform, that they do spend a lot of money to make sure our experience on the platform is good. From giving us features like gifting to carts to you know uh, constantly updating our discord stuff that shit's not cheap and if they if they are not making money with the hardware not the ecosystem the hardware how long is it before they decide enough is enough yeah we've seen microsoft give up on things that were much more expensive and much more sought after given that they give up on mixer they give up on um, the Windows, the phone. Windows phone. They gave up on Zoom. These are things that were W's. Had they really just hey, yeah, stuck with I feel like with they're it. gonna give one Microsoft Teams before long. Like, yeah, which is uh, Microsoft Teams is, is fine if they just leave it the fuck alone. Don't do it. Like, just just leave it alone, bro. That, that's my point. That gets on my nerves with these Xbox fanboys. Tell me who you to tell these people what to do. Uh, you you don't you know how do you think like. You can't tell a, a trillion dollar company, uh, you know, they, they, they got the, yeah, this trillion dollar company has dropped so many balls. They've stepped on so many rakes. It, it, people be acting like there's some myth mythical creatures running these bitches. It's human beings. And a lot of the time, they're the most out of space, out of mind. Mother, mm, they are, they, You're about they to go just, there. I just feel like they're so... What do they call it when, when, like, they're not out looking at the whole pic? Yeah, they're, they're out of touch. They're out of touch with actually in the gaming industry. And you see it. Like, and what's funny is I have this thing that people say gaming is dying. How often do you hear this? A lot. Gaming is dying. Mm -hmm. No, only Western gaming is dying. Mm -hmm. Almost every Eastern publisher is flourishing. Even Square Enix's unrealistic expectations ass, they still doing good. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. I need a, I need a, the thing is, is that, you know, it sucks that they do it. Every time they open their mouth, I feel like they, they stop, need to stop talking about it. 
They don't have to talk about it, but they 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 do it to themselves. They create that negative news every time they have a string of like just good shit. The string of good shit was just showing video games. That's all, you know. Showing Stalker Two, showing Indiana Jones, showing South of Midnight. You know what I mean? Hearing about Call of Duty. We don't need. We don't care. We don't need to hear you talk about your you know your your multi platform plans. It wasn't necessary. So what it does, it just it just it destroys the morale again and make have people feeling bad. It's a- it's it's like you know I just want the industry to improve. I I want the industry to improve to the games we kind of play. I want people to feel comfortable, you know, uh, making coverage in the game. I want the media to stop acting like they're they're superior in every sense of the imagination, every sense of the word of the imagination. I want people to stop you know boycotting every game that so happens to be something that they're discomfort with for some reason. It's just like to me. Where it starts is accountability. Phil Spencer and them need to take accountability for not necessarily running Xbox in the wrong way, but there's a lot of key components that they messed up on, like letting Redfall come out, doing all these things throughout the past 10 years for the Xbox brand that has destroyed the trust of the user. Yeah. And they released one platform exclusive all year, which is... It's supposed to be going to PlayStation. When is Hellblade 2 coming to PlayStation? I don't know. I, um, I do think that's going to happen. Like It's like I said, at this point, dude, everything's coming. It yeah, don't matter. It's, true. it's just a matter of when. Yeah. But, uh, man, yeah, but, uh, you know, we're just about the at the end here. Um, and, you know, we're, we are happy to have been able to discuss, you know, the things going on with Xbox. Uh, their releases such as uh, Indiana Jones, Stalker 2, South of Midnight, which all had like great showings. And, you know, an update from the man himself, Phil Spencer, in regards to uh, Xbox and the, there's no red line for whatever game comes to PlayStation, Nintendo, et cetera, et cetera. Attic, what do you got going on? Um, I'm going to be playing some more Death Stranding. Uh, you know, I, my, my opinions on the game still stand. Only reason I picked it up is because it was 20 bucks. And I kind of wanted to show, like, you know, Kojima, like, look, even though I think, you know, you was on some really good acid when you made this game, you know, I don't even do drugs and I'm envious, whatever the hell he was on. Uh, I see it, man. I see why people like it. I see the the the, the charm to it, you know, uh, and I wanted to show that, you know, th- th- this... First off, I wanted to, to give the game a chance. And it's not even that necessarily it had to get my Xbox or I needed it for free. I've had this game on Epic forever for free. Uh, but one of the biggest changes is now I stream more. I stream like three, four days a week. So, you know, it, it, I do like sitting around with my community and just, you know, talking shit with this game. Because well, yeah, it, it is bad. There's a time where I didn't know you could punch people. And I was stealing from this camp. And then they found me. And at first I panicked. But then I realized I I could give them these hands. Yeah, you could wait, this is Death Stranding we're talking about, right? Yeah. yeah that's what I said. There's there combat? Oh yeah, I was dude, I, I knocked out like four people. Okay. And then I stole all their shit. Nice, okay. Well, I can't wait to get to that because I'm about to say I I like running and climbing all days, you know, you know, puts a brother to sleep. Oh man. But, uh, you know, thank you guys. Thank you to the Weapon Wheel Patreon for, you know, uh, making this uh, possible. Shout out to BG and the Weapon Wheel Podcast, of course, every uh, Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have some uh, some interesting guests the next couple of weeks, guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. We will see you guys next week on uh, Play Xbox Podcast Power Pi, Weapon Wheel Patreons. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely do it. Xbox is the best box. I am the best. Wow, I lost my voice. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We out of here. Peace and love. If I can get this thing to do what it. Wow, of course. There we go. There we go. We still.